six people were asking about how to input the data from question one from these PDFs. And they are clickable PDFs, so I could go in and highlight everything on the page, even though the only thing I need for the first part of the question is the undergrad headcount. So all I need is just the year and then the, this first column for undergrads. So I'm just going to copy that. I'll go into Excel. And if I just hit the paste button or if I hit control V or whatever, then it all does it on one line and that's pretty messy. But there's this little down arrow at the bottom of the paste button and it'll give you a few other options. So sometimes um, I'll try this match destination formatting. Sometimes that works, but it doesn't seem to be doing it now. So I'll undo that. If I go to the paste special button, it seems like the, usually what I have the best luck with is to just try doing as regular text without any formatting. You could maybe try some of the other ones, but just kind of mess around with some of these options. So if I just put it on regular text here and hit OK, then it's, it's putting everything in at least the rows that I want. So I'm getting a different row for each set of data, which is nice. The only bad thing is that it's kind of putting all of the data for the row into a single cell. So if I just click in, you know, A2, the cell A2 here, it's not just 1984, but it's 1984 space 4,101 space 87.4%. So I want to be able to have, you know, a column A, which is just the year, and then a column B, which is just the undergrad enrollment. And if I kind of scroll down column B, I can see there's actually, if I look up at the, the formula bar, they're calling it, there's nothing actually entered in there, so it's just all blank. But if you happen to look at my Excel tricks sheet, which I assume everybody did, I just assume everything that I post on my page that everyone has looked at and is comfortable with. But just in case the random person hasn't done that. If I highlight everything in this row, one thing that I'll notice is that there are, between the different variables, the different labels here, there's a space. So I've got a space here between year and undergrad, a space here, there's actually a space between percent graduates. That might um, throw things off a little bit. But if I highlight this whole row, or if I just, well, if I highlight it all, and then I go into data, and there's this text to columns button, which is very helpful. If I click on that, then it gives me different boxes to go through. And there's two choices here in this first step. So I know I have all this data here, and I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to turn this long line of text, I'm trying to break it up into different columns. And there's different ways you could do it. You could say that um, this fixed width means that you could go a certain number of spaces, and then you're gonna chop off the column, and then go another certain number of spaces, and then make a column. And that might be okay for the year column because, I mean, all of the years here, 1984, 1995, those are all four characters. And the year label is also four characters, so that would probably be okay. But when I go to undergrad, well, the numbers here, 4,000 comma 101, there's five characters there, but the label undergrad is a lot more than five characters. So it, there are not fixed width. Each column is not a fixed number of characters wide. So I don't, using the fixed width isn't gonna help me very much. I could maybe do it somewhat because I see they're sort of lining up kind of nicely. So I might be able to do it that way, but it would, it would end up chopping up my, my labels. So another way I can do it is this delimited because it says characters such as commas or tabs separate each field. And there's no, uh, there's no commas or tabs that look to be separating them, but there are spaces there. So if I click on that little uh, radio button, is that what they're called? Radio buttons. And hit next, and I can say, I can tell Excel what is the, the thing that's between each of my pieces of data that I need. So there aren't, there are no tabs there, but there are spaces. So when I click that little space button, I can kind of see, you know, these vertical lines show up, how it's going to chop up each column. And again, the labels are going to be a little bit off. I don't really need anything after the undergrad uh, data. So I really don't need to worry about much of this. It looks like it's going to give me what I want for my column A and what I want for my column B. Again, it's, if I was interested in the other stuff, then it's gonna, I'd have to do a little bit of playing around with it later on, but there are spaces between each piece of data. And again, most importantly, on the years part, once I get into the actual years, then those seem to be chopping up the data into the columns the way that I want. So I like that. I'll just hit the, I could go ahead and hit the finish button now if I wanted to. There's other um, options here that I never really actually play with. So right here, it's 
uh, step two, I have spaces between them. I'll just hit finish. And again, I don't really need, I'm not using anything else in the table besides this undergrad column. And it appears to be setting it up correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these extra ones. And now I've got that. So I've got the year, got the undergrad. The, the next one, um, student credit hour production. Again, it should be pretty much the same way. I guess it doesn't like the top, so I can at least highlight all of the data here. Copy, go to back to Excel. I'll try just a regular paste. That didn't like that. I'll try my paste just text. And actually, it put it into to different columns this time, so that's kind of nice. So you basically just do that. The PDFs that I've given you, the two PDFs that I've pointed you to, they have data in there or text in there that you can actually highlight and copy and it might take you a little while to, to paste it the way that you want it to, but it should all be there. So again, this is um, starting in 1986, so I gotta bump it down a little bit, but I've got that. And again, you might have to go back and say, figure out where the total column is that starts with the 94, 502. So I could say this is my total uh, credit hour. You just call it credit hour. And don't need any of that or that. And I know this is 1986, so I could actually just do that and put this on the top. Pretty much just doing that for, for each of those three steps to get the three types of, of data that you need. So 